thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for joining our presentation. We're gonna talk about boost your push notification, improve user interaction through natural language processing. And there you go. So we're gonna talk really fast about where is my transport, then objectives, observations, and user identification, assumptions and a hypothesis, our approach, our model, and finally, suggestions and future work. So where is my transport? Where is my transport is a great company that is creating trusted mobility data and solutions for emerging markets. They create different data solutions for business to business and business to customer, such as MyCity, Collector, Gautrain, and Rumbo. But let me talk about Rumbo. Rumbo is a an app that is focused on helping a user to navigate through the city, saving money, time, and improving the quality of life. I know for Germans it's quite hard to, to relate, but in Mexico City, as I said uh, already in my pitch, it's a mess. Uh, you have 10, 20 different uh, use, uh, different systems trying to co-work together, and it's a big mess. Uh, so this gives the opportunity to plan routes in several public transportation systems, as I said, giving you centralized data. And for now, it's focused on Mexico City, but limits also open now, and the other cities will come. The objectives of our presentation or our project was identify kinds of users, increase the activity of Rumbo, identify which features make the user open a notification. So we start with data cleaning. We start. Uh, with all of these uh, notifications, it was around 2.2, around 2.3 million. And finally, we ended with 900,000 uh, notifications that we use, which is here. So with those, we make some assumptions and hypotheses. The environment effect. The environment effect is what we call a cause by culture and environments such as working hours, the crime, sadly in Mexico City, there's a big crime, especially in the micro buses, micro buses, uh, and the internet, of, the cost of the internet. So these are fact, factors that may affect our system. Second, our hypothesis, sorry, is uh, the first hours are most of the use where the user interacts. Then, the tone of message affects the opening rate. That means the positivity, neutrality, or negativity of the message of how, affect how the user interacts, whether he opens or closes the or not open the notification. Finally, the engagement of the users decay over time. That means the more the the user uses the app, the less uh, or the the more time the user it gets more used to the data that it gets, so it, it uses the app less. So finally, we get uh, identified three kinds of users, what we call the missers, the dismissers, and the active users. And as you can see here, a, a big part is a uh, misuser, which is people that are getting the notifications after the effect or the situation or the incident has happened. So if you, you heard about a crash two hours after the crash has happened, you don't really care anymore. So that's uh, just to give you a better idea. Then we have the dismissers, people that just are dismissing the whole time. And then we have a small amount of active users. But this is really important. From these, 58% of notifications are seen on time. So that was one of the things that we thought was uh, way, way less. And now, to so we can have a closer look of the users, you can see that misusers are around uh, 4,800, dismissers are 5,500, and active users are around uh, 490. So what we did with this information, we decided to identify the relevance of each notification. In order to do that, we create a classification model. The target was uh, notifications with 5% opening ratio. Why? Because of our SKU data. And uh, our base model was a decision tree, 
and we try to get a balanced accuracy of 67% and get as an output a matrix of features of the, and the weight of features. So in order to do that, we went to the natural language processing. So first of all, we, we got the text and we transform it to pipelines. From these pipelines, we create, a, we tokenize the words. In, once we did that, we can use models, uh, already trained models such as uh, ENS core news and Beto sentiment analysis in order to get more information out of it. The first thing that we did was uh, the part of speech tagging, which is assigning my grammatical annotations. Simply uh, on simple words is creating tags for pronouns, adjectives, nouns, and so on. So the, the computer can understand what is this. And then we did a sentiment analysis where we assign positive, neutral, and negative values in our, uh, using pi sentimento which is a Spanish uh, based on Beto sentiment analysis. And the idea is that you get positive. Let me make you an easy example. A, a positive statement would be, what an awesome player is Chicharito. That's positive. That neutral would be something that, what is this? It's quite neutral. And then a negative example would be, this is horrible. So you get, get an idea of what we're trying to teach the computer. And now I would let my friend team to continue the, with user interaction. Yeah, hello, thank you. Um, so um, this is a diagram um, which shows you um, the um, reaction time when you send out a notification. So um, this is the um, point where, or the time where the notification is sent out. And these are the hours um, after um, the, um, the um, release of this. And you see there's a density on the bottom that means but the notifications are um, uh, read in the, um, which Chris mentioned, 58% uh, in the next two hours. So um, after these two hours, um, you see 42% uh, uh, um, that are distributed until um, the, the evening. So these are people who are dismissed it or um, not reacted in time. Um, so can you go to the next slide? This is a simplification of the previous graph, which is showing you um, um, the hours of the day, um, and uh, this, this is the count of the dismissed notifications. So the orange ones are the open notifications, which are actually used, and the other ones are the dismissed notifications. Here you see the first um, uh, in the first wave. This is the rush hour um, when the people go to work. Um, this is the midday, and this is the second wave. So. Um, uh, you see that there's a huge difference between the open and dismissed uh, um, notification, and that is uh, something we have to uh, take a closer look at. So um, um, uh, when uh, um, we look at the um, uh, um, users that um, miss the chance uh, um, to react on this um, uh, notification, um, it's also missed chance for interaction. So um, it's um, good if we um, uh, um, send them uh, um, a message later um, uh, and ask them uh, um, why is this and uh, take a closer look at this. So, um, but uh, reacting late um, mostly likely implies dismissing is clear because um, after the incident happens, um, the news isn't uh, value uh, um, uh, for them anymore. And you can see that there's actually um, just 420 active users, they use the um, uh, notification more than um, two times. So in, instead of um, 4 million notifications. So thanks, Christine and team, for your section. Uh, now it's time that we talk about uh, our model. Uh, we were trying different types of model. Uh, we tried with decision trees, uh, random forest, and then we end up with uh, XGBoost because it was the one that was giving us the, the best uh, results. And uh, XGBoost is a model, it's an ensemble method. Uh, that means that it tries to combine uh, several uh, weak learners in order to produce an optimized one. And its main features uh, that in order to uh, summarize would be a grain descent that it's uh, that means that tries to uh, see the importance of each feature 
and update it. So each iteration is uh, updating the importance of the feature in order to make uh, a proper uh, model in the end. Uh, the second one would be the gradient boosting. That means that every time that it's making a misclassification, it's uh, boosting that uh, interaction in order to learn from that, Yeah, in order to make the model a bit better. Uh, just to mention in the end, we have to take into account that uh, our uh, data set was uh, unbalanced in the sense that we have only 25% uh, of uh, messages with more than 5% and uh, we applied cross-validation in order to be sure that our uh, training data set uh, was proper but that it behaves as well properly when you are confronting it with uh, real uh, data. Uh, in the end, we were quite happy because we achieved a balanced accuracy, which is the metric that usually uh, is used in order to uh, try to take a look at the uh, unbalanced data of 76,27%. Uh, so trying to analyze now the different uh, importance of the features, we can move on. Thank you. Uh, we can see here that we have, uh, for instance, uh, suspension of service with an absolute value of 20%. Uh, and then we will move on to 12% uh, on info pronoun. That would be the amount of times that you have a pronoun, uh, when the sentiment is positive, and so on. But uh, it's important to know that a model like this is not about one feature uh, being more important than the others and explaining a model, but uh, about how uh, the thing work between all of them works and that's why we wanted to make a little homage to Alexandre Dumas uh, my Latin is not good neither my French that's why I'm gonna say it in English one for all and all for one and in the next one uh, we are trying to say why is that uh, the way that they work we are having here for examples uh, we have uh, for each uh, kind of message so open message and dismiss message we have uh, the correctly identified and the wrongly identified we can see how the red bars are pushing towards a positive classification and uh, we have the blue ones uh, interacting against so it's important to remark what I was saying in the slide before. Uh, if you see here the effect of suspension of service uh, equals zero, uh, the first one, uh, so zero means false, so there's no suspension of service in this one. Uh, but we have that this is pushing towards the positive. Meanwhile, in the second one, it's uh, pushing towards the negative. Yeah. So it's uh, depending on the example, depending on the sample, it may vary, but in the end, it's making uh, an idea, getting us some results. Talking about results, this is what we uh, understood. This is our interpretation of the results, Christian. So uh, the first one of our results would be the severity of effect and cause. Uh, uh, we can see that the, yes, I think that, uh, exactly, thank you. Uh, so the effect suspension of service is way more impactful than a uh, high waiting uh, time. The same happens with the demonstration being more important than just the rain. So depending on the severity of our cause or effect, we are gonna see a more uh, um, opening rate on our messages. The second point uh, would be related to uh, the sentiment analysis that we were performing. So we can see that uh, positive uh, notifications are better uh, in general compared with the sentiment neutral and negative, which are very close to each other. Uh, the third point, the third uh, interpretation, it's the what I call the cliffhanger effect. So basically when you have a message that is uh, quite long and you have plenty of uh, uh, pronouns, numbers and words and as well the length uh, way behind, uh, way below, uh, it gives you that idea uh, that you just want to see, want to read uh, what is the message but in, it's not appearing in the phone. Yeah, and the last but not least, uh, we have the entity importance. Uh, as well, using the features of uh, pronouns and uh, numbers, we think that there's a relation between, uh, um, for instance, streets are pronouns, uh, as well as the name of some services, and as well, uh, metro line one, two, three, or the bus 120 are numbers. That's why uh, we think that uh, entity importance is real and um, users are more likely to open notification when they are reading multiple lines affected or different streets affected. So uh, now uh, we continue with uh, my colleague Tim. Yeah, um, so this is um, EDA part two. Um, this is a um, 
Uh, there are two diagrams. One is uh, the opening rate of the notification, and the other one is uh, what we call an interesting message. An interesting message is um, the ones that are on time and read. And you see, um, when you look from the start, which is January to the June um, on the right, um, that there's a decay in the, um, uh, in the opening rate and also uh, what we call an interesting message. So um, we have to look at it a little bit closer. So uh, can you go to the next slide? So um, as I mentioned, um, the, all the dismissed or, um, or, or missed users, um, um, how we call it, um, we uh, maybe add um, uh, a special notification for them and uh, trying to get in contact with them. So um, as uh, um, just Eduardo said, um, that we found out that uh, a notification that is longer is um, more uh, um, uh, um, being reacted on um, than uh, short messages. And we have an idea. Um, and when you have a shop system, you measure um, the success um, when you uh, look at the visitors and the people who buy something. So we uh, took over this uh, um, as a reaction score, which means uh, all the people that get a notification and um, uh, open it in time and this is called what we say relevance. So if you have a dashboard where you look at um, things like your user traffic and so on, you can add the score and you look at it for a on a daily basis and see it um, in a historical view if it's uh, um, going up or down. Um, and we also had the idea to put in um, uh, points of interest in the notification. So uh, if people are not um, uh, used uh, for uh, um, used to uh, street names um, in the notification, they can uh, um, maybe orientate at um, things like places and churches that are in, in the near area. And the other one is breakout room, which we call stuck together. That means um, when you're in the app and you are in a traffic jam or um, a train delay or something else, and uh, the notification gets so many people, um, we op you open a, um, something like a, um, uh, like a WhatsApp log or Slack log, and you can add pictures, uh, make comments, and you are able as an operator to see in real time how this in incident is evolving, and your um, uh, um, and the user interaction is um, maybe going up. Uh, I don't, uh, but we don't know. It's maybe a good feature. So what we should do in the future is take a closer look at the first three weeks. We couldn't find out what happened there because we have a high outlier. Um, the other one is a quality estimator. So um, everything we calculated to find out if it's a relevant notification or not can be um, calculated in real time when the, uh, when the operator is um, entering a notification. So there's a traffic light system um, um, where you can act of, the, um, of, 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 of your notification that's sent out. The other thing is an A-B test. That means that you have two um, uh, fields where you can put in a message maybe uh, two human generated message, maybe one uh, um, uh, AI generated message. So um, the one message is sent to uh, group A, the other one to B. Afterwards, we measure the success and, and, and um, yeah, and try to find out um, which uh, uh, um, type of notification has a bigger impact. So um, the other thing is linking entities we find in the notification to our um, model. Um, just as a new feature. And the other one is an incident forecasting. This is just um, to get um, uh, an overview um, of the workload, um, maybe in rush hours, maybe on holidays, um, uh, when um, we uh, just look at the historical data and predict the future, what will happen when and so on. Yeah, so um, yeah, thank you. Um, this is just a small visualization of um, Mexico City. And uh, the red ones are incidents and traffic jams, and the yellow ones are demonstrations. Uh, this is just an example how you can look at Mexico City and look at your data. So, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.